Guys, thank you very much for joining us for the first meetup of quarter one. Uh, these are a bit of relaxed meetups. If you've been around uh, these meetups before, you know it's super casual. It's uh, discussions, it's talks, it's jokes. Um, Vince, hey, Vincent normally has a funny joke, but Vincent's not here, so that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, so these things are very informal, relaxed. These are your spaces, so please feel free to communicate in the chat. Raise your, raise your, raise your hand. Shout, scream. It's all cool. Uh, but we do record these sessions for uh, the guys who can't attend, so you can come back to anything that we might have missed before. Um, just for some context, uh, for there are some new guys here. So Ilian, I chatted to you before, uh, but there are some uh, new guys that I see uh, here. So my name's Nick Nick Benson. I'm the community person, human being for the program banking community. And so any sort of questions that you might have about the community, please feel free to ask. I'm literally here to help you do really cool things. Uh, we also have Wayne. Wayne is the head of you know, Vestex Holder API. So he's here to discuss with us what they have planned for this quarter, which, uh, which is some very cool stuff. Uh, and then we also got Devin. So Devin's uh, here, who's, he's a community member. He, uh, uh, and he's brought some thing that's really cool i think you guys are going to like it uh, a lot and then of course we've got shan here to keep us in order and to make sure that we're following the rules okay cool um so just very quickly for the agenda for tonight uh, it's uh running until about half past seven but again that's just it's not a set goal it's kind of just there uh but i promise you there is going to be it's going to be worth your time and you'll walk away with something very cool if there's any or questions about the gender, anything you guys want to add, delete, you guys happy with the gender? Is that cool with you guys? Cool. Awesome. Um, Which I'm going to be 20 minutes, but we can you can ask questions and things. No, no, it's cool. <laughs> Look, it's not, it's just there. It's you got 20 minutes. You can do what you want. You can sing a song. It's I'll do cool. a song and dance. Okay. Oh, yeah, that yeah, that's awesome. The boardroom dance. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, Wayne, so what have you guys got planned for quarter one? Are you showing the slide, Nick? Yeah, yes. like always. Yeah, like Beautiful. always. I got you. Good, because I'm very bad at these things. So, um, <laughs> so this is the... I didn't put on what we finished last year. I think basically almost everything we said we're going to do, it's now in a state of beta testing or in testing or in some stage. So I thought, let's just look at quarter one, what we plan for the year. Um, or oh, not the year, quarter one. I didn't plan further than three months. It just gets <laughs> too much. Okay, so the good news is the virtual car project is going well. Um, we're hoping it's still Q1, it'll come out. That'll be, you could spin up a virtual cart through the API, and manage some of the car behavior, like um, pocket potentially, put some root code on it, all of those types of things. So that's very exciting. Um, and then that's something the community has been asking for since the day we went live. Like it's probably the number one R, so that's very cool. Um, so keep your eyes open. Our team isn't building it. So we only build APIs that expose those things. So we sort of depend on other teams, but from what I can gather, it looks well on track. So there's nothing, no blockers. Okay. Yes, virtual cars. Okay, second one. Um, sorry, I've got like the worst eye fever here. Um, we've like as as we've been building out obviously program thank you for the last two, three years, it's been very much in a beta phase. Like we we first launched with that, like obviously we didn't know if anybody was gonna even join the community or one program of banking. So we kept it very small, like, for example, if you wanted it up to this point, you needed to contact your banker, your banker would go through some manual process, it might get lost some days, Nick's biggest bugbear, like it's quite painful to get people activated, because we never like built it from scratch to be mass produced, so the last while, Ernie and my team has been working on actually getting the self-service activation going and, that, and it might not seem like a big thing for the community, but it's a big thing for us, and I think for Nick, because like anybody that now basically joins and wants to use program banking can go and hit a button and they'll be activated for it. No more ask your banker and all that. We have stuff that we've been dealing with in the last. So that's from a, a admin point of view, that's a big one for all of us. And I think from a new people joining and wanting to use programmable banking, I think that will really reduce the like, you know, the initial barrier to entry. Like, how do I get started? 
Um, and then end of last year, we launched the new developer portal. It was quite well. We've got some feedback from the community and from Devon that we're going to be looking at to fix and implement. Um, so look out for updates on the dev portal. We, we're basically constantly going to be working on this developer experience thing. Like yeah, one of my big passions, not only for the out external APIs teams, but for internal, is to really think about like when we build stuff, what is the experience when I'm interacting with those APIs of yours? And what's the, like, how can I get the best developer experience? I know in the old days, typically when you build something, you built it, just put it there and left it, which I take a step even further than that and make sure that whatever you produce, the developer experience is quite amazing. Okay, so we're like, we're constantly going to be working on that. Um, and then there's a key flow migration. My team asked me to put this one on here, yeah, but it's quite technical. So anybody on my team want to take a stab at it? I'll have to take a stab at it. Basically, when we launched programmable banking, we, we built it just for developers. So in other words, when I log into Investec Online, I have access to my own data, my own accounts, my everything. It very quickly became a problem that when we had some clients, especially in the business banking, private bank space that said, I don't really like giving my credentials to my dev that's going to be doing the integration for me. So we went and we built this X API key thing. Yeah, if you use the API before, you know there's an X API key. You generate the key and that key basically tells you what you have access to. Um, but the people that were initially, the very first, I don't know how many there are, like, let's go with 50. Um, you might notice that there are still some people that are actually connecting to us without the X API key which basically just locks it to you. We've standardized this now. So everything basically needs to migrate to that, that key flow where you, you generate the key and you use the keys. The impact to the community is your old keys will still work for a while. Then they'll stop working. You're going to have to regenerate keys for yourself or generate them in the first place because you probably don't have keys if you're still on that old pattern. Um, so that's sort of what that is. It's a bit of a technical cleanup come out of beta type of vibe thing. It, does that sort of make sense? I hope so. It's like a very technical bit of a pain. Okay. Um, the next big thing, like we did lots of work in the last year and even through the whole year to start looking at low-code solutions. The reason for that being that, like, as community members started to build stuff, it became quite obvious that it's quite easy to build a prototype, but if you want to actually use that, like get clients to use it or use it to make money or something, there's a couple of barriers to entry there. Like you need to register with a vendor with us, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole like admin to do stuff to get it to be hardcore app. So we said, maybe there's opportunity to, and I know the whole world's going this way, sort of at the moment. So is there a way where we can sort of streamline that so people can get solutions going on low-code solutions? By low-code solutions, we mean, we mean plug it into Power Automate from Microsoft or some tool that's already plugged into things that can accelerate your initial development phase, basically. So instead of you trying to do everything from scratch, let's leverage systems that have built stuff. We use those systems and we just extend it, basically. Um, so we've done lots of work on that last year. I think the, this quarter for us, it's a very big thing about getting some actual examples live. We, we've got some stuff that we built. We want to just test to make sure that stuff is used because we haven't really answered the question yet. And maybe the community can help there to say, are low code solutions a thing? Or are we just wasting our time? Would you rather just go hardcore into the API and we stop the stuff? So, so we can so, debate that. Yeah, that's actually a cool question. Question thing because uh, is low code actually of value to devs or within programmable banking? Or are you asking is low code or valuable to? other people or other hotlines who aren't devs? I think low code is valuable for people that can't code. That's obvious because they can't code. So they use drag and drop with a big type of integrate patterns, which are, which are nice. The question here is, is it useful for developers? So maybe that's the question we can get answered. Like is a low code solution valuable for a developer or would you rather go like full hardcore, <laughs> notepad, come on, prompt, old school. <laughs> come online, you know. Okay, sure. That's fair. That's a good question. Okay, so um, there's lots of focus. You can see there's not too much functionality here. What we want to do is like just clean up a bit of this beta stuff, get us to the point where we are now, where whatever we have, it's usable, it's nice, it's easy, it's solid. We're not like in the startup phase. Um, okay, and then the first thing, this is quite a big piece of work. Um, 
So we've been skirting with payments up to now, like we did the transfers, we did beneficiary payments, all very contained in context of your own account between your own things. Um, there's obviously on a corporate and business space a big demand for actual payments. Like how do I do third party payments through the bank if I'm sitting on the outside and I want to do stuff? Um, there's a lot of work we need to do to prep our APIs and everything. Like look at the security model. Is it is it still good? Do we have to put in surfs there if you start doing payments? Do we do IP whitelisting if you want to do payments? You're like just basically harden the, the integration pattern so that when the payment APIs are there, we are ready from a security and a governance point of view. So a lot of work there. It might not be very exciting for the community initially because there's going to be prep work and there might be APIs coming out, but like it's a very critical piece of work for us from a bank point of view. Like the number one ask of anybody on an API is payments. Like it's been there from the start. Well, the number one ask was transaction history and the number two ask was payments. So, so we, we've, we've gone as far with payments as we can within the, the governance foundation we have right now. This is taking it that step further and going, how do we get companies to use us to do payments potentially? So Heinrich had a question, a question um, Wayne, Sorry. about the flow. Yeah, uh, there's that question, yeah. It says, uh, what, you know, uh, he asked, uh, what is the key flows are you actually using or, or implementing? Okay, um, I'll try and give it. So initially when we started the API, we used an absolute stock standard client credential grant type, which basically means you go in client ID secret, you connect to us, and then you can do stuff. Um, and that was great if you're the developer yourself because you're sort of locking it down to your account and your data and everything. As I said earlier, what started to happen is people would go and say, this is a really cool thing. What I want to do, I want my developer in my business to integrate with me. So in that case, normal client credential grant type means I will take my client down in secret and I'll have to like put it on a sticky and give it to my dev. Now that already starts to break the security model that the bank's comfortable with. We don't want people sharing keys and things like that. So we said, instead of that, let's create this mechanism where a client can go in with client credential ground type still as much as possible, generate the key and then lock down the, the capabilities of what can be done with that key. In other words, let's generate the key for this one account and potentially only these scopes or whatever you want to do. So create some mechanism where a person can go and say, I'm going to give a key to a dev. It doesn't have access to my payroll bank account, for example, or other things. And they can use that key to do stuff. So, so that's been implemented. And anybody that's new to the community will probably only have a bit experience that because they, I'm not sure everybody's still on the old key flows. So when we talk about the key flow migration, it's migrating people off pure client credential grant type that's locked down to your own account to this key mechanism where you can generate the key to start creating um, like lockdown versions of access. Heinrich, does that make sense? I hope I'm not explaining it funny. Yes, I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> I'm happy to chat um, after this, Heinrich, if you also want. Yeah, guys, feel Please feel free to uh, use the chat if you want, or raise your hand, or just start to talk. It's all good. Uh, if there's any sort of our questions, this is a very rare time where you actually have Wayne in a room sitting down <laughs> and actually focused on us. So I mean, focused on the question thing. So if there's anything you want to know, anything you would like to know more about uh, with the actual program banking or with the API, please feel free. This is your opportunity to actually really ask some of my questions and get to those deep sort of things that you want to get to. Yeah, so it's like we can talk for hours. I see I posted there, stuff around. Um, so our, 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 let me give you some principles. Our principle with our API strategy, and for me, this is critical, that we stay as close to patterns that are already out there as possible. So not create like some weird thing where you have to do some funny stuff. So we try to stick with the, the ways our auth is secure right now. The most basic one being the three ground types on client um, for our auth, which is client credentials, API, uh, what's it then? The API key one or that, that one for three legged hours and then the delegate one. We haven't implemented delegate at all. I know the UK went with client credentials, but they also added um, what's a pixie. It's like a, an extended security version on top of it. So you have concerns about pure client credentials. What we say is let's let's evaluate it to the risk of what you can do. So 
client credentials were the key just to pull my transactions. That's low risk. But when we get to payments, we might start enhancing it with Pixie and all those things. And that I think forms part of number five, where we're saying like, what do we really need to do to make sure that this thing is secure? So I'm happy with client credential grant type in context of what you can do with it, if that makes sense. Like low risk stuff, we shouldn't make it impossibly hard to do low risk stuff. Yeah, okay. I totally agree. I think just make it more easy and simple for people to just use the product is really the basics. Yeah. So yeah. Ironically enough, like Devin's feedback to us as well has been that like this this is X API key is quite painful because that breaks the standard OAuth two patterns already. So any and then are trying to figure out ways to get back to peer client credentials somehow, maybe using three legged OAuth to generate some form of a key instead of just client credential. But so we're trying to look at ways to like make it easier. I'm a big believer. It's like if you Google how to connect to API and use our API, it should work. You shouldn't be able to need a rocket manual to do stuff. So <laughs> if we can get it as stock standard as possible, we will aim at that. That's our endeavor. But like when you work on these things, it becomes a bit more complicated than just Googling it. So sometimes we have to tweak stuff, move stuff, whatever. And that's me, short and sweet. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, you, Wayne, you short and sweet. Short and sweet. <laughs> you're, short and... you're the first person to call me sweet. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, guys, if there's anything you want to ask, Wayne, still in the chat. So feel free to use the chat if you have any sort of questions or on Slack. They, all the guys part of the Investec team are in the Slack group in the whole channels themselves. Wayne, Henny, Neil, Ernst, all of them are there. Uh, Devin's been working really hard uh, with them. Uh, Devin was actually a really cool community member who just got stuck in with it and just hammered Wayne and then with just questions and questions and questions. So he's been really digging deep in that. So, uh, but that's good. That's uh, what we want. We want to, like, we started by saying, let's build this for the community. Let's build, not build it for ourselves. Let's build it for the people that want to use it. So, hmm. Devin's been amazing at the level of feedback he's giving us. Really good stuff. It's making us learn, grow, evolve. And I challenge the community to do the same. Like if you see something you don't like, don't be like, oh God, this is horrible. Just bomb me a mile and say, this is crap. I don't like the way this works. And we can have that conversation. Yeah, which is, and they're really open about it. Uh, all, hey, all the guys, Russell's, the whole community has really been great with this feedback. And this is, again, this is your sort of whole API. So please feel free to have any sort of questions about it. Um, cool. Anything else, guys? Anything else you want to ask? Questions? Debate? Ask? Cool. I'm going to turn my camera off. So you know, watch me blow my nose every four <gasps> minutes. Okay, but I am here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Devin, do you want to add something? Uh, I was going to say, um, maybe for context, like for some people, what card controls is. Mm. Um, yeah. Right. No, I'm still, yeah. So card controls are what you can do with your card. So for example, if you're going to invest it online now, you can block your card. So let's say your card gets stolen um, and you like, you know, normally you'd find the call center, they'd block it. We actually have in the app a way to go in and just block it right now. So you can temporarily block it and then sort it out when and unblock it when you're done. Um, things like um, for virtual cards, it would be things like create my card, like update the rules on my card potentially, like but that could be the coding parts of programmable banking. So it's like be it's like the things you would imagine a front end will give you in a bank screen, like stuff to manipulate your card. It might be order an extra card. I'm not sure we're gonna go that far, but like in Investing Online, you can hit the button and order a secondary card. Like all those APIs available at the back end. We're looking at which ones we can implement that makes sense for us or for the community, right? The most obviously one is just block card. Like I said, it's like that's the stock standard default one. We we um, maybe I'm giving too much information, but we also busy implementing the Visa API controls. I don't know if you know Visa has some APIs against the, anybody that's using the Visa cards. Some cool functionality like um, set a monthly limit or um, only allow this to be at category groceries, whatever. So it's almost like programmable banking, but at a higher, more abstract level. Obviously, it's like a low code almost thing. So you'll also see some of that functionality come through. Does it help, Devin? Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to hear. Cool. 
Just uh, when, as part of the, so you mentioned the visa, so you opened up the whole thing now. So you mentioned the visa <laughs> stuff. Uh, so you got the visa control with the card controls. Will uh, Pagano Banking be able to connect up with those controls and use those controls directly, or uh, would it be two separate sort of whole ways of or systems of doing it? It's two separate things. So what we're saying is there's some basic things like the average guy can do with visa card controls, like set up the monthly limits, but any form of nuanced granular detail, like only shop at pick and pay Ben more, that you can't do with those things. For that, you're going to have to use programmable banking. So think of it as there's some simple stuff you can do on the visa API endpoints, but if you want to get fancy, like all the stuff that the community comes up with, I'm not sure you're going to be able to do that on the visa controls. They're not that powerful. They like... They give you some level of customization, but not to the level where programmable banking does. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. And they are separate. You like you could pretend now, I don't even know. I wouldn't want to speculate that you could call the Visa API from your code, but like that's I don't know. Now just ignore that statement. <laughs> <He's gonna kill me. laughs> okay. okay, so I'm making that the blurb. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, man. Um anything else, guys? Happy with it. Cool. Wayne, thank you very much. I really appreciate always your time. Thanks, man. Um, let me move on to something else. Um, it's actually, I had a cool idea of like, just so Wayne's given us a whole lot of things to think about. Uh, and just as some way to a bit of a mind break with all of this uh, stuff, if you guys want to use a Slack, the channel and just drop a meme or a gif or something around well, what do you think or how are you feeling about uh, 2023 in the community in program banking or just in your life you can drop a meme there and if it's funny enough and it gets enough re uh, reactions or engagement uh the the one with the most re uh, re re, re uh, reactions i'll send some socks i'll do something cool so with it, if that's if you guys want so feel free to hop into the channel as a bit of a break from all the serious talk about all the APIs and cards. Please feel free to jump into there and just drop a little link there. That should be pretty cool if you guys want. So while you guys are busy with that, uh, Devin has something really cool uh, that he's been working on. And I'm really excited about it because I've started to like use it and it's really been uh, helpful with me. And I use it on a day-to-day -day sort of basis now to so just check the APIs and everything else. Uh, Devin, do you want to uh, work us through the, what you got? Do you want to stop sharing? Yeah, uh, yeah. thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, let me uh, pull this up. So for those that don't know, like um, Postman's a, a tool that uh, one can use to connect to APIs, um, largely for testing and um, just, I guess, ideation in, in some aspects. And what I've did for uh, myself and I guess for, for others to, to share it as I've been going through the API and, and um, just understanding what what all is is available, how it looks and, and hopefully being able to feed back to, to the Investec team as to any discrepancies and anything that I, I find along the way. And so I built a, a Postman um, collection as one calls it and, and that has all of the, the different um, API calls that uh, have been exposed by uh, Investec at this point. And I've just made it really easy to, to sort of get the tokens and uh, just navigate um, the, the authentication and, and set everything up for, for people who might not um, have the time to go through the documentation and, and work through it themselves. And so what I thought I would I'd just show you is, is what it looks like at the moment and what one can do with it. Um, Hopefully everyone can see it there and just see if that's um, so like when when one opens it at the moment, it's uh, I, I've broken it down into a few categories. Um, and and so there's the the accounts, um, the beneficiaries and, and largely in the API docs, those are sort of one. And then there's the the programmable cards. And so I've, I've split them up into to sort of those three categories um, within in this collection. And because of that XAPI key that Wayne had mentioned, the authentication needs to to be done in an additional step at the moment. So I, I've just kicked that out to the, the end there. And so for one to to use it, um, I've uh, set up all the 
the variables. So this is the Office N make account. So when Wayne was talking about those those credentials, you've got your client ID, you get a client secret, and then you generate a, an API key. So those you get out of your Investec uh, portal uh, or your, your banking portal, and you would need to then uh, insert those into, into the system. Um, and with those, this collection uses that to, to connect and, and um, uh, utilize the API. And so there's this um, authentication um, piece there, this, this call here, uh, and that plops in your, your API key as well as puts in your client ID and, and, and password. So that's like a standard authentication mechanism. And when you call this, it will uh, return your, your access token that one would use. So this is the, the most manual step in the process, um, just because of the way it's, it's currently set up. One needs to take this access token and um, I've, I've just got it in a variable at the moment up at the top here. And um, once you've got that variable in there, this gives you access to all of, of um, the functionality of the API. And, and that, that access token has a number of scopes to it. The one that I'm using has the scopes for everything. So it can use, it accesses all of the, the functionality from transfers to beneficiary payments to programmable cards. So um, it's, it's sort of a, like uh, does everything. But if we wanted to call uh, all your accounts, get your list of accounts, as you would see when you log into your Investec um, um, internet banking, this would be your list of accounts that you would see there. So this gives you your basic information, um, the, the names that you've called those, those, your account number, all of that basic information. And this is the pieces of information that you'd use to access the rest of the accounts. So uh, currently I have it said that um, I'm using variables and the reason is because I'm sharing this, um, it's like a public share. So if I take this and I put it into, if I just use this in the API, um, Postman moans at me to say that I'm sharing my credentials or you know, uh, private information with everybody. So that's ultimately why I've taken those variables and I put them in this sort of secret vault here that you're seeing. Um, so I, I dropped that account ID in there. And with that, we can then go off to our next step is to uh, get an account balance. And, and so um, using that account ID um, as a variable, that will give us the, the current balance and your available balance for that account. And so as one would have, um, the, the current balance is, is um, like your actual balance and then your available balance is with uh, overdraft. So any other financial products on top of that. So like um, that's the differentiator there, but this is basically how one gets balance for a, an account. And um, if you wanted to then go off and, and get your transactions for that account, um, there's the transactions function. You're able to set a from date and a to date, um, and you also are able to set a transaction type. So I've turned that off. And I'm currently just asking for all transactions that are from January. And so that will then uh, return all your transactions that were for the month of January. Um, and that gives you obviously quite a bit of information that one uh, obviously would see on your, um, your internet banking, but as well, it's, it's coming through here. And so, um, uh, a lot of this is is really um, simple stuff or um, we've in in the last bit of time we're, we're unpacking like the dates and and hopefully all of that will land up in the documentation um, so that a lot of this information that's coming through here will be a lot easier for people to, to understand and, and utilize um, so you'll see like a, a card transaction will give you a little bit of the the details on the card um, and any other information that you need. So you've got your, con your, your transaction types like card purchases, fees and interest. You're able to, to drill down and get all of that information through the API here. So I think for most, this is the probably the most powerful feature or the not necessarily the powerful feature, the most used feature that the, the API uh, currently provides that, that people will be using. Um, and then lastly is you have the ability to transfer between your accounts. And so 
Um, the function here is really is um, you'd give your um, other accounts ID that would come from the get account. So you could get that ID, you'd paste that in and you'd be able to transfer from one account to the other. So if you're putting some money into your savings or you want to automate that, this functionality can, can do that. Um, and then, yeah, next is, is really uh, beneficiaries. Um, so one thing we did there as well is uh, I've, I've just tried to bring all of that, that information through. So you can pull your list of beneficiaries that uh, comes from, um, from the back of, of your uh, internet banking. So you need to go in there, add your beneficiaries. And for security sake, currently you need to pay that beneficiary on that portal before you can use the API to pay them. Uh, just to make sure that uh, there was some due diligence that was done there. And um, yeah, so this will give you all the information on those beneficiaries. And uh, then if you want to be able to make a payment to them, um, there's largely the beneficiary payment function. And uh, if that variable will work, I'll check. Uh, I think I'll put Nick's, uh, no, um, let me get Nick's. Uh, are you give him beneficiary the ID. Oh, no, I'm about to. Okay. Um, awesome. <laughs> so uh, I was I was trying to be sneaky with this and try to have like a, a variable inside the the JSON, but that does not seem to. Um, let's put that as demo. Um, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, I have messed something up. But basically here is that if um, one takes from your, your beneficiaries here, you get this list. I might have just actually missing the equals. It's one of those. Uh, Is it double equals or just one equals? Actually, you might be right. So let me just check. Uh, yeah, so from the beneficiary list, it's just one equals. Yeah. It's the joys of copying. <laughs> uh, one should not do demos in live environment. Uh, you should. They're fantastic. <laughs> uh, I don't have the authorization. Best demos so this, ever. What do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's um, when I said I had all of the the scopes. For some reason, I I, I seem to not. Um, I know Nick, you you looked at it, but uh, mm. so this is that uh, key auth um, flow that uh, Wayne was talking about. Is that I haven't been given the permissions to actually give Nick money there. But um, usually you would then, uh, obviously, we'd get a response back showing you all the details. You can then go check your account um, um, transactions, and it would be listed there as well. So you would have all of the information there. So that's really beneficiaries. Um, currently, there is a way to get like your categories. So if you class stuff in, um, uh, in the online banking, um, it can give you those lists. But... I currently don't see in the API docs, which I'll hopefully be adding, is a way to actually, uh, you know, to um, search by category, but that should hopefully be cleared up. And, um, and then I've also put all of the details for uh, programmable cards. So anybody that wants to play with uh, cards before um, the virtual cards come through, I've taken all of the, the functionality that's available in the API and, and that's all available through here. So if you want to get a list of your cards, um, that's accessible. Um, so you'll, you'll get all your, your cards that are available. For most of us, that will just show one, uh, whether you've got programmable banking activated and all of the details. And then, um, yeah, anything that you want to do in terms of utilizing that, this has all of that. And then there's just a few sort of um, helper functions like uh, getting a list of countries, currencies, merchants, that sort of information that you would see when uh, looking at card data. That's all available in here as well. So um, I sort of try to pack everything into an easy, easy format to use um, so that people can, can find it. And then the last thing that I've actually started to add to this um, sort of in tandem with us working on the documentation is that a lot of the docs have been pulled through. So um, just on the right hand side of this, there's a little docs feature there. And um, you, can, you can find more docs about the function uh, or like, so this collection, so accounts, if you just wanna see um, all the information about the accounts um, or the specific uh, feature, 
I've, I've tried to start to put a lot of information in there that gives uh, extra context. So um, there's, there's some understanding uh, as well as there's a bit of information as well on some of these variables like um, exactly how it works and which values it affects. Um, just to put some more context in there that currently isn't in the API docs, but will hopefully eventually be in there at some point. So I'm certainly using this as a, a living document as I'm um, exploring the API and, and building onto it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I've done in this Postman collection. I don't know if anybody has any questions or any uh, any thoughts on it, uh, feedback. Well, yeah, well, I can attest that the beneficiary payments does work. I, I have tried it. It does work. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I suppose the ultimate VK VT, what do you think about this? I love it. Love it. I'm I'm excited about about this. And thanks for putting in the time uh, to put this together. I think it's gonna be very helpful. Um is 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 this like shared in a, in a Git repository or somewhere where we could potentially contribute to it? Um, I'll, I'll see if that's possible. It, it's currently through Postman systems. So it does have like a, it, it basically is like a Git repository because there's, um, I, I see there's like four people currently looking at it at the moment. Um, so there's like a invite, but when I was, when I was sitting down with Nick with it, um, he like forked it and then he was making his changes. And I think there is a way to push them back. I'll explore okay. that a bit more um, and see if there's uh, if there's some and and I guess as well for for some other you know others that haven't really used uh, Postman as much, you can also generate code snippets in in a number of languages. Um, so it really helps to you know especially if you're just trying to speed up development. Um, all of that code examples are there. I've also just made sure that like all of the the right uh, like sort of uh, headers and everything have been set so uh, you've got like the bare minimum that's needed but um, it's to spec as to what Investec's looking for so there's no confusion there as to those code snippets that you'll get cool cool I think it's amazing because like when you start everybody starts creating one of these so you're just gonna save everybody five hours of their life I think it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> thanks Wade Okay. Uh, Russell, what do you think? Is this something that you would be able to use? Yeah, I, I'm quite excited about uh, what it will do for new users specifically, you know, because effectively a lot of the new users would have accessed Postman before and that'll give them a jump start because I struggled a lot with authorizations and headers and things like that when I started off. And I think that that's going to solve a lot of that. Thanks a lot, Devin. That's a lot of work that. Much appreciated. Yeah, no problem. I've, I've actually made like four of them now. Um, some of them are actually in a GitHub repository. Like when I built the mock server, the mock API, there's actually a Postman um, collection in there. And then I rehashed it with this one. I'm not quite sure why I rebuilt it, but I did. <laughs> Bigger and better. <laughs> cool. Uh, any other questions um, that you guys want to? Because uh, I did paste the the link to uh, Devin's his collection in the chat, so feel free to take a look there. I'll also post it later on. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Bugani, what do you think about this? Because uh, I see that you kind of like it. Uh, one two testing. My test one two. On. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I'm always checking this out because uh, happy new everybody. Nice to meet you again, <laughs> beginning of the year. Um, actually, I'm so impressed with uh, what Devin has created here because uh, wow, uh, it solves a lot of uh, because last year when I was trying to get to understand this in the documentation, this is like straightforward uh, and uh, it's something that you can actually be as use it as in a plug and play. So I'm looking forward to be using because I only started using Postman last year when I was um, uh, using it as in, uh, for some of the APIs for Cisco and stuff like that. So it's going to be pretty interesting uh, how this also fits into that type of our knowledge base as well. So I'm really impressed about what I'm seeing at the moment. 
Awesome. Awesome. And uh, remember that a lot of stuff that we kind of build and and I'm sure because I've been working with Devin, so I know how his approach is. So it's very much a collaborative approach. So if you guys have anything that you want to add, kind of work with, you know, yeah, this is for you by you essentially. So if you want to get involved, please feel 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 free to reach out to Devin, uh, add hey, add in however you can make it better. So yeah, cool. Is that Devin? I'm talking and, uh, for you, but uh, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, happy. I really like engagement. The, oh, sorry. Uh, the card payment systems. I like to see how that works. Right. Um, <laughs> I really want to go test that out <laughs> as soon as I can. Awesome. There, there is. Can I just um, understand? I, yeah. Sorry, got sorry, for Russell. Guys. Can I just understand the the card elements that you have over there? Is that uh, for the forthcoming? Is that the existing card? Uh, APIs that have always been in existence, or is this the new ones that are coming in for uh, uh, the virtual cards? Uh, this this is um, what's in existence, but from what I understand, they'll largely apply to to virtual cards. Um, okay. Uh, so right. what I'm trying to do there as well, um, there is currently. Um, some of the the feedback that you get when you actually do some of the calls like you remember when you had that other issue and you just got error error sort of that error data back um i'm seeing some of that from the card section so um i actually have, i've been speaking to i see neil's on the call here yet um we spent a lot of time yesterday and i was going through a lot of those um problems with them so we'll hopefully start to sort that out and, and prepare it so that when uh, virtual cards comes out, you know, the postman and everything is going to be a hell of a lot easier to use um, yeah. because I've gone through all of the scenarios um, and I'll be able to feed that back. Awesome, man. Thanks so much. No problem. So just to be clear, Russell, I think those the card things you're seeing there are how to check the code into your programmable card. That's the card yes. stuff. Yes, okay. I understand. So, so the, the idea is that you guys are going to reuse that for the virtual cards effectively. Yes, you can inject code onto your virtual card, but there'll be additional features that are coming, which will be like block this card. So you don't have to code it yourself. It'll follow the normal process. Yeah, cool. I was on mute. Apologies. Okay, cool. If there is anything else that you guys have any sort of questions, Devin is part of the community. He's in chat. As with everyone else in this community, we all are available if you want to keep chatting about stuff. So, yeah. cool. Um, let's move on to community updates. So, what do we have planned for quarter one or for the first few weeks, essentially? So before we get into the community updates, we always ask, because we always want to make things better and cooler and more exciting for you, we would really love uh, to kind of get your views on what, on kind of what you think we should do better or what, you know, what we did badly or good or the whole thing for this post event or for this meetup. So we want to make the meetups really exciting for you. So we'd really love your feedback. I will choose a super randomly a person who falls in the survey to win some uh, swag, some office in swag. So please feel free to fill in your details, give, hey, give us your honest opinion, views and thoughts so we can make it some, you know, something really cool. And I'll give you some swag to say thank you very much for your time. So yeah, so while you guys are busy with that, let me just run through some quick sort of community news, some community stuff that we've been working on for this uh, month, for this quarter, and to give you some view of what's happening for the next few weeks. So as you might have seen in the Slack in the channel we're very excited uh he just couldn't make it today but he will be attending the other meetups we have sam uh who's come on board as part of the core team in the community to help you guys build really cool uh, things uh we'll give you some more details of how you can really get a get engaged but sam is here in our community to help you build things further to bring it up to our concept to build it out into something really cool so we'll give some more details about it but just to give you some view of it. So when you start to see Sam around, don't feel who is Sam? Well, this is Sam, you know. So, but we'll give him a whole big wow wow at the next, you know, at the next meetup. Okay. Um, 
Then, so for this quarter, we'll be exploring root cards and card control and building really cool apps and tools to help other people. So that's our focus for this uh, quarter. So watch out for some very cool little tutorial sessions that we'll do, some live coding, because this is an idea that we have, is doing some live coding of the cool things that you can do with the card. So yeah, just look out for some more details on there. And then of course we have our bounties and our bounties have been going for a while and guys are really excited about it because we, we, we have two bounties left uh, uh, that you guys can still go, go after. Um, and I'll drop a link uh, now about that. Um, so let me actually just drop a link now about that as I'm talking. Um, so you can take a look at our bounties uh, program. You can win some cash there for three to four hours worth of work. So bye-bye because I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, you can take a look there. If you're keen to get involved in that bounty, please let me know. There's a channel for that. Uh, there's people here to help you to board it out. So don't feel as if you have to do any bounties alone. And then of course we have, so just watch out for this. We're going to do a state of community essentially sort of all survey because we're doing something really cool with this uh, year and got big, big plans for the community in 2023. We really want to get a bench, a benchmark of where we're at at the moment, how you guys are feeling about the community, how you're feeling about program banking, how you're feeling about the API, how, you know, how you're feeling about life. You know? So we want to get that community survey, the survey out to you as soon as we can to just get that benchmark. And then we want to make sure that we improve upon any scoring that we might do with that survey. And of course, we'll share back the, the findings and the results with you guys as we go, go along. But just watch out for that uh, community state of community sort of our survey that we'll do in the course of this quarter. Okay. Um, any questions, any questions that you guys might have about the community or things that you want to see more of in 2023? Oh, that was cool, happy. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's the community updates. Um, our next community meetup will be in February where we will do our ideation fund. As we mentioned before, we tend to have uh, a meetup every month. Uh, and it tends to be themed. So the first meetups are basically the roadmap for that quarter. The second meetups are some ideation sort of fun. And our third meetups are the demos of the, some really cool things that we've done in that quarter. But of course, there's other events that we do in, the, in between all of those sort of meetups. But our next big community meetup is going to be in February. We'll be ideation. And I'm thinking around cards. But if there's something essentially that you guys want to play around with, please let me know. I'm more than happy to build a meetup that you guys are really going to enjoy because we've done meetups around AI. We've done, you know, ones around uh, whole virtual cards and our payments. So, and so let's take a look at what is it that we can do and play around and have a bit of fun in this quarter with you guys. Cool. Any questions? I was happy with that. Did I spell off February correctly? Yes, I did. Yeah, cool. Okay. Cool. Guys, um, if you want to stick around for uh, more, uh, to just chat around, to chat some breeze, that's all cool. But our formal discussion, our formal agenda for tonight is over. And thank you very much for your time, your effort. And I just really appreciate you guys just pitching up during a load uh, shedding time. And for Wayne and Devin for their times, for their all of their hard work and everything. And for all of you guys for just being really cool human beings. So thank you very much. Cool. That's it. Thank you. Well done, Nick. Thanks, guys. Thanks for hosting, Nick. It's awesome. Yeah, no problem. It's always fun. I like this. <laughs> Hello, Rita. You've been hiding there. <laughs> yeah, she's working hard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael. <laughs> That's cool. Russell, take a Thanks, screenshot guys. of your background. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also wanted to know, Russell, is that a background or is that a real? Because then I'm very uh, jealous. That's the real thing. <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the Drakensberg at the moment. There's a race on here. Yeah, and yeah, I, I I wanted to just see how well this camera would work with the uh with the lighting and it actually works really well. This is just my normal cell phone camera. Well, it's working to make us jealous, I can tell you that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's awesome. Yeah, I think we need to have the next uh, meetup there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think we can afford it. Yeah, just rent out the bungalows. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. 
Ilian, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ilian just joined uh, the community in the last two days and he's mean to just jump right into all the stuff. So, hey man, welcome. Thanks. It was a really good session. Cool, man. Yeah. If there's anything you want cool. to know, if you want Thanks, to ask guys. the guys, let them know. Thanks, Russell. Thank you. Cheers, Zach. Cheers. Cheers, man. Bye, guys. Have a good evening.